any technology that gives you a route to the cache will be exploited. The biggest threat is basically anything with a chip in it, and we find it all around us, you know, credit cards going contactless, passports talking to machines at the airport. So when the robots rule the world, I only ever have to fool the robots. You perhaps wouldn't expect to find a hacker in the picturesque British county of Dorset, but we're here to visit the home of Adam Laurie, or as he's known in hacker circles, Major Malfunction. Adam's a security researcher who specializes in electronic communications and is also a senior figure in the well-known hacking community, DEF CON. He's gonna show us some of his more recent work, and he's also asked me to bring my passport along, which I'm a little concerned about, but he promises me that he only does white hat work. <laughs> I'm in the darkest depths back here. So this is where you do your hacking? Yeah, most of it. So how long have you been doing this for? early 80s, late 70s. The technology must have changed quite a bit. Technology has changed a lot. That Your classic hacker, kid sitting in his mum's basement, he can get the tools that enables him to do really highly technical attacks for a couple of hundred bucks now. So, you know, RFID is one of my specialities. So I kind of collect um, old credit cards and hotel room keys and blanks that I can use to try and clone them as I figure out how they work. You go by the name Major Malfunction. Yeah. What's the story behind Why? that? Um, a lot of people assume it's from the film Full Metal Jacket. What is your major malfunction, num nuts? Actually, it was a dry comment that was on the background sound when the shuttle blew up on takeoff. Obviously, a major malfunction. Kind of sounds like a, um, a baddie from the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> Adam specializes in hacking RFID chips, like the ones found in contactless credit cards. Using a cheap card reader and some software he wrote himself, he showed us how he could easily rip information from his alter ego's card. It's a card he actually uses, so we've had to blur out personal details. So what we've now got is the contents of the chip. So as you can see, that number should match what's printed on the card. Yep, they look the same. So if I wanted to now make a copy of that mag stripe, I could. I could equally have just had all of this running in a backpack, string down my sleeve, reader in my hand, going up to people on an escalator or standing behind you at the bus stop or whatever. The whole ecosystem of chip and pin is broken by design anyway. You don't necessarily have to have ever put the pin in in order to do a transaction. So we can intercept the message from the terminal saying, please tell me your PIN. So the credit card never actually knows that it's been asked for a PIN and the transaction proceeds and everyone's happy. Adam made card hacking look incredibly easy. And next he wanted to demonstrate how he could use a similar method to clone a passport. But this time I was providing the materials. This is my personal passport. I'm trusting you, you're Trust promising. Trust me, I'm a hacker. <laughs> So, so this is the chip? This is the chip that's sitting in your passport. Just thought you might like to see that. So if we put this guy on here, don't look at my keyboard for this bit. I'm oh, just okay. about to type in my password. <laughs> now all I need is the chip. Here's one I prepared earlier. This is my horrible homemade <laughs> passport chip. So if I run that program again, that is now an identical clone of your passport. So if you went through border control with this passport, it would think that I'd gotten through? Well, certainly the machine component would be fooled. There's, there's no difference now between that chip and that chip. But a human might notice there's something a little bit fishy about yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> if the human ever gets to see it. But that's the point, when the robots rule the world, um, I only ever have to fool the robot, so I can use any old passport. I can destroy the chip in, in it, replace it with my own chip. So here's my passport photo, but clearly, you know, I've changed the printer details. So I could do the same for Your yours. Your born name was an evil hacksaw. <laughs> so who might want to do that? Obviously, passport fraud's a big, big problem. Yeah, so criminal gangs, organised crime, and, yeah, people smugglers, and that kind of stuff. Can you now delete everything, please? Yeah. So we've deleted that. Sure. I can overwrite it if you want. <laughs> I'll done. take your word for it. 
bit. I'm one of the good guys, believe me. <laughs> Hackers and good guys can be the same thing. If you try and infiltrate DEF CON as a Fed and we spot you, in return you get one of these T-shirts. <laughs> and those are the agencies that have been caught so far. CIA, Home Security, NSA. Now we're all friends and we're all on the same side, right? It's interesting to hear from someone who's been hacking since basically before the internet and who's followed the field ever since to where we are now. As the risks have become better known, it's clear that hackers like Major Malfunction are not only more respected, but they're critical for keeping our network secure. I just hope he doesn't do anything dodgy with my passport details. Tell us why you've got three what look like <laughs> handguns. For some reason, shooting and hacking seems to go a lot together. I'm into the ballistics, crafting my own ammunition, doing long range shots really clears your mind. You have to be so focused 